Okay, so this is a run through of this little HTML form generator and server app written in Rebel. Uh, what it does is it um, allows a user to create an HTML form. Um, you can enter a form title and choose the name of the file that you want to write it to. It could be any, any file name. Um, and then you add some checkboxes, some text entry fields, um, some areas, text areas, and uh, here's how you do some drop down selectors. So if I just submit those default things, you're going to see that a little Rebel server program comes up, finds your IP address, and it opens up the browser to that IP address, and creates the form that you've designed, and allows you to type in, I'll just do some random text here, um, you can see um, how this works, and then uh, here and you can see that that data entered into the browser has been saved uh, received by the server and it's also been saved to a file um, so that you can go through that data later and use it um, and this will run on any machine that rebel runs on there's absolutely no third-party server uh, software, there's no Apache or anything like that running, it's just purely a Rebel program. The only third party thing that's needed is a browser, and this can be any browser. This is pure HTML, there's no JavaScript. So um, these are very simple forms, and you can change these things to, to run. Um, if we run this again, I'll uh, close down the server here. And uh, like I say, for example, we add, oops, I'm add some random text again, but we'll add some checkbox options. That random text here, and here we'll add some more options to the drop-down selector. So you can see that what's what's created, this form that's created, is actually what's typed in. Here's those extra options that we had. And so this form can look however you want it to look. Um, and uh, of course, we could we could change the type of form uh, component components that are displayed. But this is a pretty good typical uh, form that'll handle most sorts of data collection operate operations: fields to enter texts, areas to enter larger uh, chunks of text, some selections, you know, on and off selections, and then drop down selections. Usually handle most of the typical kinds of information you're going to get from a user. And uh, was that so? Um, I also created here. There's a, a, a CGI version of this, so you can run that app that we were just looking at on any machine that run, runs Rebel, Rebel 2, um, or you can use this to run on any sort of shared host. Uh, we use HostGator and Lunar Pages and places like that to run these apps, and you see you get the same little GUI here that lets you type in your. Let's add a field here. Once you type in what text entries and other form components you want and you can see it actually creates the HTML file displays it here for you, you can use it and you can save the URL of that created form so you can create as many different forms as you want instantly to collect information from users so basically you're creating a little CRUD app creator um, by using this uh, by using this app, you can collect any sort of information and very easily create a new form instantly, which is then saved on the server. And then that server saves to whatever file name you've selected when you were creating the form. If I do that here, you'll see it actually saves that data to a, to a file on the server. And you can you know, create as many different files as you want. It gives you the opportunity here to select the database. And if I actually go to that database um, on the server, type that in, you'll see that it's been saved there. All that data has been saved in a Rebel format, one that's easily parsable by Rebel, loadable and parsable by Rebel. Okay, so the way the code works, and we'll look at the GUI version, there's basically three parts to it. First of all, we create a, a GUI, and, uh, and we create a style here. The area is just going to be an area which is 500 by 100 pixels. We lay out these things across. 
<coughs> so we've got um, a little uh, label for form title and uh, uh, data file, and then we've got some fields to enter the data with some default text already in them. And then we lay out all these things below one another. So we've got, again, some more labels and some more areas with some default text. That little character right there is the uh, carriage return. So this is what's displayed in the GUI. And uh, you can see the format for a drop-down selector is just to, for each new drop-down drop selector, we put a uh, three dashes and then the, the name of the displayed uh, uh, label and then all the items that are included in the drop-down. So really simple format. And then we have a button. Now when the button's clicked, what happens is uh, we uh, go through each of the items that have been entered in each of those each of those areas above. We parse them to remove all of the uh, lines and we get a little list of all the things that have been entered into the into those fields. Um, and we also create a data file name. This is the file that it's going to be saved to. And uh, we give a, a label to that data that's been entered in the, uh, in the title field. Close the that view. That's what happens when you click Submit. If you click Save, what that does basically it just saves all of the form that you've created so you can edit it later, use it later. Um, it saves it to a file called, uh, by default, called form settings, but the user can change that. Uh, it saves all of our info that we've typed in, the user's typed in, and then you can also um, load that back. So here we're creating a settings variable, which is loading um, whatever file is, file name is selected by the user, by default form settings, and then setting each of those uh, text fields above back to the data that's been loaded in. So really simple GUI. And then um, we create a new um, a new series here, or a new uh, um, bit of text, a string of text called poll. Um, and uh, then we're going through each of the checkboxes and we're appending to that poll text some HTML, which is basically the form HTML that's needed to create um, checkboxes. So we're going through each one of those and putting them on a new line. And uh, we do the same thing with uh, text entry fields. Go through the all of the um, text that have been entered and append them to that HTML for poll. And then do the same thing again for the area fields, and the same thing again for the uh, um, drop-down boxes. So there's a little more code here to kind of sort of parse out the uh, the data format that's used in the drop-down selector GUI. Um, so this chooses whether or not we end the, uh, the selections, and we just put in each of these required HTML uh, pieces to create a drop-down box. And when it's done, we end the uh, we end the um, selectors. And at the very end, um, we create a little input button, and that finishes off the HTML. So what we've just done there is created an HTML file that's all represented by that little word pull. Um, and uh, we also now um, load the data file. So if there previously was, if there's previously existing a data file, we load that data file. And uh, if the data file doesn't exist, then we create a new block there, uh, which is called responses in each case. So we're loading the data file, uh, whether it's new or used, and then we open a TCP IP port. And um, we get the current IP address and put a little message to the user. so that this see the servers running and then we browse that local IP address 
and then we run the network loop here, a server loop, which takes each connection and uh, have some uh, error checking code, but which we don't currently use. And it goes through decoding whatever has been sent um, from the, the user. And if it's not an empty bit of data, then it uh, does some uh, additional manipulation of that data. It appends um, a uh, timestamp, current time, and then it appends the um, data, which is presented by the character Z, uh, by the word Z, um, back to that uh, block which we call responses and then we save that block to whatever the data file name is whatever was entered by the user and then we show all of that data back to the user and then we um, print that poll back out to the browser that HTML form back out to the browser with some wrapping HTML content and that just keeps looping for every single person that connects to the, the server. So really simple, really powerful um, application that lets you create as many different forms as you could, as, as you could need, reuse them, and, uh, and you can even save and load your forms so if I want to create something totally different here, I'll create a form that looks like this. And I want to create our field entries that look like this. Just type in random text here to do it quickly. But, um, let's save that. Let's save that to form settings two. And then we can load either of those. Let's, let's open the form settings. So you see I have that old form. And now I've got, if I want, I click form settings two, and I've got the silly little form that is created, and that creates a totally new form. And the same thing work happens with the CGI app. Um, we can I'm sorry, we can run that CGI app on the server. And it goes through basically the same process. Instead, instead of using a GUI, though, it, uh, it uses some HTML. So the first part of this application is basically the same thing that we did in the Rebel GUI, except now it's um, now it's presenting that uh, GUI in HTML format as a web page. And we do all the same things after that. We parse up whatever has been entered by the user. Parse up all of these things that were entered all the check boxes and entry fields and drop downs that were um, entered into the entered by the user into the little uh, creator GUI and we create a poll HTML file and we uh, save that um, save that file or save that HTML to, HTML to a file which is then served to the user and um, respond to any data that's been submitted back to the application. That's it. That's how this, this whole thing works. This is a really useful, really powerful little program. And uh, this is actually about uh, 70 lines of code, the CGI version less than 100 lines of code, even nicely formatted to fit in a, uh, uh, you know, a small, small screen. Um, a good example of what you can do um, with Rebel to create nice working applications.